Hello, my name is Tux. I teach at Pratt, uh, Pratt Institute in Brooklyn, and I'm going to talk uh, about my paper, which is dealing with curved pieces. Uh, let me bring up the presentation. So uh, the paper is called Curved Crease, Paper Faulting Structures and Their Tectonics. And we're trying to, uh, let's say, report on the findings of several projects that we have undertaken. <clears throat> and the specific topic in geometry is mirror reflected cylinders. I'll get into uh, what that is a little bit later. Um, I just wanted to introduce uh, this endeavor by saying that we were uh, fortunate to have a grant by the IDC Foundation and that over the course of three years, we've been able to work with several students on projects at a medium to large scale. So <clears throat> the research question for this paper is given a constraint of curved piece paper folding, which type of sheet structure with compliant hinges can be designed and fabricated? And what we are, what we, what we endeavored to do uh, was to create proof of concept prototypes. So we're using a specific topic uh, in geometry that deals with developable surfaces, and then demonstrate how this geometry can lead to stiff assemblies, specifically if we arrange them in the form of a monocoque. And the final goal is to highlight the design principles uh, behind such uh, tectonic solutions um, and the relationship between 2D uh, manufacturing and three-dimensional structures. The principal developable surfaces that exist are the plane, a general cylinder, a cone, and the tangent surface, which uh, is depicted here in the upper diagram. On the right, where the green curve is called the edge of regression, which is where all the tangents meet. So these are the only surfaces that we can use. Um, we focused mostly on cylinders um, in this uh, series of research studios. And below you see a diagram that elaborates how a mirror reflection works. So we have a general cylinder on the left, which we intersect with a plane. And then we mirror reflect uh, the, the bottom piece back up and position it exactly on the curve that is the intersection with the plane. And that curve is a crease. And so because this is a relatively straightforward process, it's easy to control the process in CAD uh, and do this in a direct way, meaning that we can manipulate the three-dimensional model directly in software. <clears throat> The series of projects uh, had all very focused premises. Uh, we started with a large scale test, which you see at the top right, uh, which was made as a single sheet. Then there were a couple of uh, studios that focused on smaller scale intervention, <coughs> excuse me, smaller scale explorations uh, in order to figure out tectonics um, at the smaller scale. And then the final version on the top right is sort of the, the culmination of these projects uh, that resulted in a built structure which we built in, in the architecture school. And the bottom shows you the diagrams that you will see which show you how these uh, parts are designed uh, and how the mirror reflections are uh, undertaken step by step. <clears throat> the sort of architectural background, if you wish, or the precedent or reference that we wanted to use was Jean Prouvé's petrol station, which is part of the Vitro collection. And one important point here was that there's a moment connection on one side and the columns on the other. And we sort of used that as a, as a uh, reference uh, in order to <clears throat> get an architectural scale um, that is also, uh, let's say, uh, based on uh, sheet manipulation. Uh, Jean Pouvet was a master of manipulating metal sheets and stamping them into more rigid surfaces. Uh, we, on the other hand, are doing this with curved creases and in a different material. And the <clears throat> first step that we needed to undertake was to understand how we can we create a, a volumetric structure, um, since uh, monocoque is a volumetric assembly. And this bottom left diagram here shows you how through mirror reflections, you can manipulate a surface such that it meets itself at the end. And the right is a cardboard prototype that shows us how this loop 
can be closed. Uh, there's also, there's a structural piece on the inside. Uh, so this was the first step in, in, in terms of understanding what could the, or what should the design approach be in order to arrive at a volumetric configuration. Another, let's say, typical architectural problem is uh, we needed to figure out a technique uh, that would allow us to turn the corner. So on the left here, you will see the crease pattern. It is uh, red are uh, mountain creases, blue are valley creases. And you'll see that the um, valley crease is reaching both edges of this rectangular sheet. <clears throat> These are degree three vertices because we have three creases uh, converging in one point. And it's sort of the arrangement of those that make it possible to turn the corner um, in order to achieve the, the inner surface of this moment connection seen on the right. A further, let's say, step was to understand how it is uh, that we should arrange the curved creases such that we could create a double surface shell or monocoque um, uh, as an end result. And here you see step by step top left the input surface, you can imagine this uh, cylinder to be much longer as in uh, the, the surface that is uh, making the design that is at the bottom right is much longer than the depicted surface here. The blue planes are the mirror reflection planes and we now see step by step how we are first, uh, you know, folding our way along the inner surface and then as we get to the bottom row of the diagrams, uh, we see that the the back surface is sort of rising up at an angle <clears throat> and is then mirror reflected back down and is meeting uh, the sort of input surface, if you, if you wish, um, at its very beginning. The, let's say, next step towards uh, realizing a larger scale structure was understanding what kind of assembly seams we would need to devise. And uh, this study here was based on the assumption that uh, a connection between two parts is easier to manufacture if it is in a plane. And what that means is it has to have a very special relationship to the rulings of the surface. Um, and as you can see in the central image um, at the bottom here, this allowed us to uh, you know, use stiffening plates to uh, turn the corner of the surface as in bend it over to create a stiffer edge. And the, the resulting prototypes were at a fairly significant scale. The image on the bottom right here is a model that is uh, almost three and a half meters long. Uh, the material that we use is vulcanized paper. It's a uh, cellulose-based material that is uh, treated with an acid bath. So vulcanization is a little bit of a misnomer. It's a polymerization process that makes the material stiff and we can laser cut it, mill it, uh, and what is uh, great about the, the bending behavior of this material is that when it is uh, made a little bit wet, so as long as the material is moist, uh, it can be bent fairly easily. A, let's say, further step towards understanding the tectonics of, of working in this way was potentially hiding interior structures. So this stool design here has a triangular box uh, or plate, if you wish, uh, that sits right under the area, under the seating area, uh, which you see in the bottom right of the diagram. Now, we achieved fairly sturdy results that way and um, started to investigate lapped joints uh, in this studio, but the sort of band-aid, if you wish, of, of an internal structure that has, uh, that is using different geometric principles, we thought um, should be improved. Um, as a next step. Another, let's say, significant discovery uh, was that in this furniture studio, we were able to connect parts to each other along congruent surfaces. So if you focus on the bottom right of this uh, slide here, you'll see that the parts are coming together along surfaces that are congruent, which um, are perfect areas where you can either use rivets, other mechanical fasteners, or adhesives. And these connections are fairly strong and reliable and prove to be uh, an important let's say, component of the final design. So here uh, we can see 
the, the component around the moment connection, uh, top right of this uh, slide here, and the, the two bays that we have uh, devised for this final design uh, were made of three parts with a column, which is the top left. And the significant difference uh, in this let's say, studio or research challenge, if you wish, uh, was to figure out a way how to make the connection between two components use the same geometric principle. This is a, a sort of mock-up of a, of a connection. So bottom left, you see the joint as it is closed. And in the middle, you see uh, the two parts taken apart. Uh, there's a sort of forage gap in between here. And the surfaces in this joint are all part of uh, mirror reflections undertaken in very specific areas in order to find sort of geometry that locates the two pieces relative to one another. Uh, and the lapped connections are also, uh, let's say, evident in, that, in the detail that is towards the front of the image, where you can see that additional fasteners are used in order to bring the two components together. The section of this assembly was uh, designed in a way that two parts, two sub-assemblies, can come together along a step joint. And you see the larger bolts uh, within the joint. So all these access holes that you see in the surface uh, were positioned such that you can reach in with a hand and fit the bolt. The exterior surfaces are all uh, sort of unperforated, so there are no holes on the outside. This was one of the very first uh, attempts in, in figuring out how we can make uh, structures that are, let's say, at the scale of a pavilion. And we studied the connection between two sheets and the compliant hinges in this case here. So the bottom right shows you the entire flat assembly, which was on the floor, and then hoist it into place. Uh, we had uh, two uh, crane, tripod, tripod cranes, excuse me, uh, with a few uh, wires running across that allow us, allowed us to install pulleys so that we could lift the surface into place and set it into the base rail. And the, the perforations that were studied during this studio proved to be adequate uh, for this type of, of assembly. In the furniture design studios, we were able to, to explore that a little further. So if you focus on the dashed line of the bottom left image, you will see that the the distances between the bridges of the material uh, have different sizes. And this was, let's say in this case, uh, scripted such that the folding angle uh, determines the dash size <clears throat> because you want the material to be softer when the fold is very subtle. And the, the bottom right um, illustrates how two sheets are coming together along the finger joint with rivets since we needed to make sure that we have common tangency between surfaces. Another important area of study was how to keep surfaces in place uh, and how to devise internal uh, substructures that aren't continuous and don't take on any significant forces, but parts that make sure that the, the two the outer and the inner surface of this monocoque stay in the position where they're supposed to be. So you will see tabs that are folded over and riveted back to the surface. And in this case, uh, this was a, a study of a degree four vertex, um, which needed special treatment around the areas where the, the creases converge. This is the, the CNC cut file for bay A. Uh, on the left, you see the larger surfaces for the inner and the outer shell. And on the right, you see the sort of dispersed uh, spacers uh, between the two surfaces that allow us to control uh, the exact position of the two surfaces. Here's a slide that shows you how the tabs work uh, and how these interior elements were distributed um, across the entire structure. Uh, you also see a, a steamer here in one of the images. This is a, allows the fiber to loosen a little bit and makes folding of, uh, of this material much easier. So how can we summarize the contributions? Uh, we used uh, very specific workflows that demonstrate how you control a three-dimensional configuration um, in 
a two-dimensional crease pattern, and we were able to create a connection between the two that was very productive. Um, the part-to-whole relationships and the, the, all the developed details do build on sheet construction and metal, uh, but I think we were able to demonstrate how we can get to a volumetric assembly uh, that is, that I would argue should be called a monocoque structure um, that we have not seen, let's say, using curved creases um, in, in, in any other work, um, at least that we were able to find. And lastly, given the constraint of curved crease paper folding, uh, we think that we were able to demonstrate that the aesthetic range of this way of working um, is, let's say, less narrow than one may assume. Um, thank you, um, and I hope to see you all at the conference.